Hello everyone, I am Natalie coming to you from Girl Scouts Carolina, the Peaks to Piedmont. We are online on our Facebook page every day or well Monday through Friday to do a short virtual program at 11, 4 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Keep in mind these times are going to change uh, starting next week, I believe it's on Monday, there will not be a 4 o'clock video. So for the latest updates, make sure you're logging into our Facebook page and, and checking the information there to, to make sure you are able to um, be at our live, our live videos. All right, and if you have any questions, you can reach us at girlscoutsp2p.org. All right, today I am here to show you how to make a pinwheel really easy and you can do this with with items that you have at your house and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my camera here get it lower to my workspace area and uh, it doesn't take a lot of supplies I've got a piece of paper thumbtack well push pen or you could use a thumbtack I've got a little bead which is optional but very helpful to have and a pencil, which I'm going to use as my the stick that's going to hold the pinwheel. You can use anything. You can use a stick from the yard. You can use a chopstick. You can use um, a little piece of wood. Anything that's easy to put a, a push pin into. And I've got a pencil and my scissors. Alrighty, the first thing I'm going to do to make the pinwheel the actual spinning part, you're going to need a square. And I'm going to make this out of a piece of paper. The notebook paper, typing paper is a really good texture, easy to work with. It's not too thick and pretty easy to use. I'm not going to be too concerned with exact measurements, but I'm going to go with a six by six. So I'm going to mark my six here. I'm going to come on this side and do another six. I'm going to come up here and do a six. Any size is okay. It's just whatever you would like to do. Oops. Just don't lose your bead like I'm losing mine. Okay. I've marked my square on a piece of paper. I just drew a square. Hope you can see it there. And I'm going to cut it out. The reason I'm making a big one right now for this demonstration is so that it, big ones are easier to do. If you've got little hands that are working on this, I would suggest starting with a six by six, a, a larger square, a piece of paper. Okay, we've got our square. So the first thing I'm gonna do is fold it to where it looks like a triangle. Fold it that way. Oh, and another good paper to use for this would be, um, uh, 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 like magazine pages or something like that that'd be really colorful. And if I had a long time, I might sit here and paint designs or, or make my white paper look a little more interesting. But for now, we've got a white pinwheel on the way. And I folded it in half. I've made a triangle out of my square. I'm going to unfold it. And we've got a line in the middle. Go to the other corners. I'm going to make another fold where we didn't have it before. And here we go. I don't know if you can see this, but I've got a square with that has been folded twice. So you have a cross um, pattern from your folds inside the square. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark this with a pencil, but you don't have to. You can just, you know, do a rough estimate, do it however you would like, but on your center, you can mark the center, which is a little dot there. On each of these lines you've made with the fold, I would go just a little higher than a half. On each one, 
and I'm, I'm sure I'm off because I'm not measuring this, but if, if you can see my marks, I've done a mark here and there and there, and then again there. And what I'm gonna do is take my scissors, I'm gonna cut on that folded line to my mark, come all the way around to each corner and cut to my mark. Okay, and I probably should have measured the truth be known because it's gonna be a little crooked. But now I have cuts into my piece of paper, into my square and got our center here. What you wanna do is you wanna take one corner, bring that corner to your center and then we're gonna go around your square. You're gonna do every other corner and bring it to the center. So the first one, we've come down and we're holding it. And for little hands and for people who are very much like me and are working on smaller ones, you may wanna use a little bit of glue to you know, put a dab of glue there, put your first corner down to hold it, put another dab of glue, we're skipping this one because we're doing every other one. We'll bring that one there and hold it. We're skipping this one and we're going to the next one because every other one, I'm gonna bring it over. Okay, and I'm gonna hold it. Whoops, there we go. It's a little big for my hand. Um, we're skipping this one because we're going every other one. And we're bringing this one down, holding it in the center, skipping this one. And we're gonna bring the last corner to the middle. So it's starting to look like a pinwheel. And what I have, straighten that up just a little bit. Now I'm gonna use a push pen if you've got a thumbtack, you can use that, that'll work. I'm going to go through all of the points that I have put on the middle. And again, I'm not gonna to be too awfully concerned with getting the exact center, but there's the push pen. It's holding all of these, let me let go and make sure it is. Yes, it's holding every other point into the center. I'm gonna grab my pencil. And since I'm not super strong here, I am going to put the sharp edge of the thumbtack into the eraser because that's pretty easy to push in there. Uh-oh. All right. I lost one of my corners. So I'm putting this one back in. When I originally put my thumbtack in there, I didn't have all of my points. Now I'm, I'm good. I've got every other point curled into the center. Before I attach this to my pencil eraser, I'm gonna use a little bead. If you don't have a bead laying around the house, it's no big deal, but I've got a little teeny tiny one. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm gonna put that on to the sharp side of my thumbtack. So we've got the pinwheel, we've got the little bead and now I'm going to bring my pencil over and I'm going to stick stick it on to the thumbtack and there we go we have a pinwheel um all right I'm going to move my camera up just a little bit here okay oh now I can see comments now I can see that Emily is on my friend Emily is is on if you have any questions please ask her. And um, I have so much light. Let me turn off this light to see if it'll help. It's making the, there we go. It's making it hard to see my pen well. Um, but I've got it pinned to a pencil, to a pencil eraser, and it spins. It spins really easily when you have that bead in between so that the backside is not rubbing up against whatever stick you're using. Um, 
I wanted to use a chopstick, but then I figured someday the world is going to reopen and I'm going to go get my take home Chinese food and it's going to be missing chopsticks. So I decided to save my chopsticks and use a pencil for this rather than that, rather than the popsicle. But all right, now we've got our pinwheel and it looks like April is March because it's been so windy outside and it's perfect time to take this outside and play. And I just wanted to show you one thing before I leave, a little bitty one that I made um, out of foil. You can use aluminum foil too, or this was from the inside packaging of a granola bar and it had red, like a red foil package. So I, I cut it up, I used it, I put it on a um, toothpick. So if I get really, really bored with all these days at home, I am going to make cupcakes and put my pinwheel that is attached to a toothpick in them as cupcake decorations. All right, that is all I have. Easy way to make a pinwheel. If you need more help, I talked too fast or didn't give very good directions, uh, reach out to me. My name is Natalie. You can uh, reach me at info. At our email address is info at girlscoutsp2p.org. Thank you, and I hope everyone's well and having a good day. Bye.